Commissioner, just in relation to, uh, of course, uh, you, as you've said, that uh, the operation has been ongoing from last year and we've had uh, uh, many guidelines to be followed, including the curfew where you've had to provide 24-7 uh, security, additional security on top of everything else that you're doing. How many offices are in operation and what kind of strain has it put on the resources with especially people not complying with the guidelines? Yeah, in the task force team, it's almost uh, 1,200 plus that are dedicated. Eh? They are dedicated to the, the COVID-19 task force. We have about 2,000 plus because we have uh, now a strength of uh, almost 4,000 uh, police officers. Uh, so having said that, um, the task evolves every now and then. Uh, it's only on, not only on uh, checkpoints. Uh, we are also assisting in other areas like the containment, the guarding of the containment areas. We are also assisting in uh, the food ration supplies. Uh, we are also um, uh, uh, assisting in other areas in which uh, every now and then, um, whilst the task force um, committee meets and there's other demand that is given to the organization. Uh, this is where uh, all of our manpower are, are being um, channeled to. The challenge for us at this point in time is the consistency. Uh, consistency uh, and the welfare of our men. Uh, that is the, 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 the issue at hand, which is a challenge for leadership. Eh? Uh, you know that we are human beings. Uh, we have limitations. Uh, the challenge is trying to keep on uh, the momentum the momentum of our presence. That is uh, the message that normally is the given down to the men on the ground. And you see that I normally, with other senior officers, go down to visit the men and talk to them every now and then. Uh, my message to them is you cannot, we cannot afford uh, to, uh, to get our guts down. We need to be up with the momentum and the posture and the professionalism uh, every now and then. Given that uh, we are like, um, as you know, uh, we are in the high risk uh, category and, um, and the virus uh, will definitely uh, be in contact with the police officer. So the internal mechanism of trying to, for us to, to have ourselves look after well in terms of the COVID protocols followed well uh, by the members of the organization. Uh, we have other internal, strategies that are in place so that whilst we go out, we also have uh, our police officers um, checked in well within so that they, are, they, they can produce what is required out of them. So those are the challenges. It's just, uh, and at times complacency comes into place. Uh, if you know that it's, it's a prolonged operation. Sometimes when you are, we are used to everything that is coming, uh, we are complacent about things. So these are all things that are challenging our presence on the ground. But so far, so good. So far, so good. Um, we also have uh, in place mechanism, our internal uh, disciplinary mechanism just to hold up people uh, accountable if they go outside uh, the, the lane. So these are everything that is going on um, as we continue to push our men uh, in the front line, uh, Vijay. Now, in relation to uh, those, uh as you said, complacency kicking in, and, and as you said, it's just human nature. Uh, you have been on the ground, even I saw that uh, you went and celebrated uh, police officers' uh, birthdays with them uh, at night to ensure that they get, get motivated. Uh, what are some of those uh, motivating factors that you're using to ensure that uh, the complacency is, is at its lowest level? Raka, for us operations, you just have your meals well. Uh, you fully understand what is the, the task that is uh, given to you, uh, the welfare of uh, individual and also the family is well. Uh, the police officers can go extra mile to do this. Uh, and uh, the leadership presence uh, to the front line every now and then. Uh, just to tell them that this is not uh, normal times. Uh, this is the only time that is required out of all of us. 
uh, to spend uh, extra hours, uh, not spending our time uh, uh, with the family, limited time with the family. It's almost every now and then we are on the uh, on the um, job sites. So the, um, the 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 issue here is that we have all there is a total overall changes in terms of uh, uh, the condition of our work. Eh? And I thank the government for that, uh, because um, you know during my young days in the uh, in the PG police force, we are not given everything. Anything, you are tasked, you go, you don't, you don't, you are not given uh, allowance, you are not given food. Uh, that is that is there at that time. Uh, but up until now, there is a lot of changes. Uh, we have uh, the salary uh, upgrade that we have. Uh, we have the subsistence that has been uh, given to our personnel that are deployed. We have refreshment. If uh, now the, our police officers have three meals a day, uh, we have uh, the support uh, in terms of uh, from our corporate service. And we also have the support of uh, the public at large. Uh, there is a lot of um, refreshment that are out there uh, with the men. So you don't have to worry about uh, what they mean, uh, their food uh, like that. And um, and we provide them with uh, with PPs. We provide them, uh, even though not all, but we are try our best uh, to, to see that they are safe, eh? that they are safe. Uh, things that we can buy and then we provide for them when they are in the front line. Um, we visit them every now and then, we talk to them. Uh, there's a lot of incentive like, uh, we allow them to celebrate their birthdays like that uh, at the job site. Uh, we encourage uh, the, uh, the NCOs and non commissioned officers that are there, their officers, at least buy a small uh, cake and then celebrate at the, because you, they cannot go back uh, to their homes and their village. Uh, sometimes uh, they uh, organize uh, um, special treatment for that. Uh, as you reach, as most of these people are hitting 21. Eh? So 21 is like a special um, birthday for them. And given the age group, uh, it's, it is really a challenge. We have an age group of workers from 18 to 30. Uh, so these are the very people that are, that are there in the front line. So the more you talk to them, the more you listen uh, to what they have, their grievances, and then we try to solve things. We have our Skype briefing every now and then uh, with, uh, with our divisional commanders. They bring in their challenge, we try and, uh, uh, and solve it, and then we take it uh, forward. We know that the tasking at hand is um, uh, demands a lot of, from the police officers. But um, these are some of the initiatives that they take a day off. Um, we try to revise our deployment uh, hours. Eh? Uh, from We normally work at eight hours. Sometimes they work at 12 hours. Uh, if we need a rise, they go 24 but we try our best to have them on shift eight hours and then limited like two hours uh, day shift, two hours night, and then they go two, two days rest, uh, two days uh, day shift, two days night, two days rest. So that uh, arena, the recuperation and rest cycle uh, continues. And, um, and as I've stated, uh, sick leave will always come. Uh, people will also want to just go and enjoy themselves, but these are, these are the nature of uh, human beings that we have, but we need to uh, just to talk to them. Eh? And there's also counseling. Our psychologist is moving around, uh, trying to counsel. We have a counsel session every now and then with our police officers, uh, just to know, uh, actually know what is the status of uh, individual police officers uh, as we continue to move with our operations.